Well, after a lot of research um, done with the um, OECD um, expert panel on what is teachers' new pedagogical knowledge, which should all teachers really know, one of the things just bubbled to the top, and that was that number one, number one, before you can tell teachers what they should do, they should really know what not to do. <laughs> so looking at a lot of the information that exists in teacher education programs, the way uh, teachers read certain types of books that sort of lead them to believe things, uh, or training that they get in conferences is not always accurate or evidence-based. And so one of the number one things that um, surfaced was that the, the first step in new teacher formation would be to, number one, get rid of the myths. There's a lot of myths about how people conceive or believe or think they learn. And um, there's a lot of things that you sort of believe just because you were raised that way or you grew up with some certain ideas. Um, things about, well, boys and girls' brains, or things about only using a certain percentage of your brain, or that some people have certain styles. Those types of myths actually get in the way of how teachers interact with their students, and they do harm, because they create these barriers to learning. They create these artificial um, limitations to the ways that um, they think that students can learn. And because they think learn, students learn that way, they actually treat them differently, which actually leads to these downward spirals of, of achievement. And so number one, number one is to get rid of the bad information. So Neuromyths was sort of born out of this necessity to bring more mind brain education information into regular classrooms, but at the same time sort of um, arm general, the general public, not just teachers, with in understanding so that they can sort of be more liberated in their, their understanding of their own conceptions of how they learn and how they take in information.